Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how to do some really cool graphing world maps. And I'm going to show you a new way to do this. I've already done a video on this, but the problem is that video and the techniques in it are good for versions of R Studio 3.4 and prior. So there's been some big changes with R Studio, and so if you have the newest versions 3.5 and newer, like 3.52 or 3.5.2, those won't work with it. So what I have to do is give you some new stuff. So we're going to end up at today creating a map just like this right here on the same data that I used prior, International Furniture Parts Sales. And I'm going to post the data for you in Kaggle so that you can, guys can download it and play with it. Um, I've also created an R Markdown version of this so that you'll be able to play with that too. Um, so let's get into this. So first what we're going to do is we're not using ggplot this time. Now we could have, but we're not going to. So this is our code right here. So basically the libraries I'm bringing in are called R Color Brewer uh, R and R World Map and then of course read Excel so that we can go and read an Excel sheet in. Um, if you don't have these use install.packages and the library name in quotation marks. So these are the three that you need. Then we load in our data right here. It's the same data that we used in the previous uh, uh, video on doing this mapping. The difference is it's a little bit different the coding for this because we're using different packages. Okay, so once you bring this in, if you want to look at the data, let's see here, we have it right here. This is the data. It's got countries, province, state, uh, city, transactions, units, sales, and latitude and longitude. So that's exactly the same way the data was before. So next what we're going to do is if you want to look at the top couple of rows of it, you could hit you could enter this. This gives you the first six rows head of the uh, data set. So you just hit that, enter it in, and I could bring this up and we can look at the head of our data set right here. There you go. Country, city, you know, what is it, sales, all that. Um, and then it's not showing the rest because it's down below. Oops, here we go. There we go. Okay. So next, um, what we want to do is this, we're going to aggregate it by country, okay? So, well, not just country, we're actually going to aggregate it by country and city. We could do it either way. If we aggregate it by country, we'll get fewer, uh, obviously, hits and fewer rows return. So this line right here, what we're going to do is aggregate it. So it's just the aggregate function in uh, R. And uh, so what you do is we've already created our data frame here, right? Right here, map data. So what we're going to do is aggregate it, and this is the line right here that you use. We're going to aggregate, and we're going to do fun equals sum. So that's the function equals sum. So we're going to sum summarize sales. These we don't summarize. So when the, what's in this list is how we aggregate it. So it's like a group by. So we will uh, summarize by sales. So you have to have the, the uh, data frame, dollar sign, and the column. And then these are the columns that we're not going to uh, uh, summarize, okay? So I have two. I have country and city. I could just do country if I wanted to. It wouldn't be quite as colorful. It would have bigger areas that are countries, and it would just color by that. This way I'm doing country and city. So I have it. Uh, it's like a group by and group by. Now next what we're going to do is we're going to do this code right here. And the reason being is if you were to look at map data, as is it would have once you run this it puts that uh, this right here the sales that's summarized into a new column called X so what you need to do is you need to rename that I mean you could work with X it's fine but in the end this would end up saying X up above it which is kinda of boring so um, what I've done is I'm using call names the call names function and we put our data frame in here and again in here we say equals equals X because that's what the name of the column is okay if we did it for multiple things or aggregating you might have an X and a Y or whatever and then what we do is this is the name that we want it to be so you put that in there instead of the X so that what that does it says okay instead of X we're gonna have international furniture part sales that's the uh, columns name then what we have to do next is we have to join the data to a map okay and this uses that our world map uh, library that I just put in above right here and what we're going to do is we're going to use the function from there called join country data to map. So it's basically this is the code that you use. We're putting map data, which is our data frame right here. 
Then we have name of the join column. So this has to be the column that we're joining on. In this case, we're using country. We could also use city if we wanted to. Okay. And the join code equals name. We could also use province or state also. We have that column in there too. In this case, I'm using country, but I have them both in here, so if I, I can use either. If I don't have it in here, I can't use that. Okay. And then we're putting it into this data frame called world map furniture sales. Then next we're going to do is we're going to use color palette. You don't have to, but I recommend using this. This is from our color brewer, which is the library package, the first one we installed. And what this does is it's going to go and put any of a number of different color packages in. Now you can go look up our color brewer on the internet and find out what all the different packages are. There's a lot of them. In this case, I'm using spectral, but I could also use purples. Purples would look like what I did in the previous first uh, rendition of this that's good for versions 3.4 and prior of our studio. Um, for the later versions, that won't work again. So you could put in here spectral, we could put in purples, there's also reds, you know, and then everything would be a shade of red, everything would be a shade of purple. Spectral is we have a little bit of everything. So it's like the spectrum. We have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, like the colors of the spectrum. And obviously the higher the amount of the sales is, the closer it is to blue or purple, and the lower it is, the closer it is to red or orange. So that's what this line right here does. What we're doing is we're just putting that into using the R Color Brewer into color palette. Okay. Now we're going to use color palette down here. So next what we do, once we've done that, is we use this right here, which is a function called map country data, which is also in our world map. So you have to have that library in here. And then we bring into that our this thing right here, which is our data frame right here that we created, uh, where we joined our data to a map, this guy right here. Okay. Then what we've got next to it is the name of the column that we're plotting, okay, which is this guy right here, International Furniture Part Sales, which we created right here. Okay, we already have it was called X. It's the aggregate of the sales column, so that's what we're bringing in there. Then we decide we want the method to be fixed width right here, and this is where that color palette that we just created up above comes in. So it makes it very simple. You don't have to put this whole a uh, long line and here you just bring this in color palette and it goes right there color palette equals color palette comma now you could also have instead of using color brewer we could use diverging heat like a heat map if you wanted to I just think that the spectral looks better and differentiates the countries better in my opinion but that's a personal opinion you can do whatever you want once you've done that um, then you also have the number of categories you, that you want to have to uh, differentiate them by if you have a low number like 10 what this will do is it'll split this up into 10 pieces 10 different colors and you know that if that's what you want that's fine I'll show you how we do that so in the end when you run this let's do this let's just run these two right here and that's the way the graph ends up you see you have your title up above ends up being this right here the name of the column you're bringing in Okay, that's why we did, wanted to rename it to, from X to this. Now, if I want to change something, let's say I wanted to use purples instead. So let's take this. We got spectral in here now. Let's make that purples. Okay, so I'm going to run the same exact code. I'm not changing anything else. Now watch what happens. See? Now it becomes a shade of purple. So if I open this up, if that's what you want, that's fine. You know, you if you want, it's like a monochromatic theme with color. It's not gray and black, but um, you can use that if you want. It still looks fine. It still differentiates very easily the highs from the lows, but it's not quite as colorful. It's up to you if you want that. It just does it by shades of color. You can also do that with reds. Um, the purples, I think, looks better for that if you're going to use a monochromatic type scheme. Um, we could go in here and make it reds if we wanted to. And these are all available on, you can just look up our color brewer on the internet and uh, you'll see all this and see how now it's all instead of purples, now it's all shades of red. So obviously the maroons and dark reds are going to be your highest sales and the shaded areas are going to be, you know, they'll fall in between. Now we can also do a couple other things. Let me show you something else here. So let's open this up a little bit here so you can see the code better here. Okay, 
So now we've we've uh, you know changed things up here, but I can also change them down here. So let's go back and make this back to spectral or purples or whatever. Okay, spectral. Okay, so we have that. And you also have to make sure that you spell it correctly and capitalize correctly. If you are off in any way, R is very picky and it'll just error out or it won't do it or revert back to what it did in the first place. You'll be like, why didn't it change color? Okay, so down here now, if I take this right here where it says number of categories, and if I change this from 100 to 10, let's see what happens here. So I'm, I've left it at Spectra, which is the first way we did it, right? So let's enter that. And see what happens. I told you what will happen is because there's a smaller number, it won't be like a phase thing. It'll just be boom, 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 boom. It has these different colors. If that's what you want and you want people to clearly see definitions of 10 groupings in your sales or whatever metric you're using here, you can use that and that's fine. I like to have, you know, like a bigger range. So if you put 100 in here, that's the difference that 10 would make there. I can do the same thing and run it again. I didn't change anything but that 10 to 100 and see how it makes it more of a spectral spectrum here and you just go by color variations. You can do either way just the difference is just put 10 or 100 there. If you put one in there it's going to have one color. That would not be good. Um, next let's go and change this up a little bit. So instead of using color palette that we created up here from car, our color brewer what would happen if we use diverging or heat? So let's do this. Let's move this out here let's put that there to comment it out and let's say I want diverging right so let's bring that in that is a color type too so we can do that we can put that here and we have to make sure we have a comma behind it right so next let's just do this everything else the same and let's see what that does so I'm no longer bringing in the color palette before right so watch what happens that's diverging okay so we have blue at the bottom red at the top and green and yellow in the middle so if you want that you want something a little bit bolder striking the thing to me though is it makes in this case with this data it makes the blues really stand out the lows and if that's what I want to identify that's fine but the problem is the highs are kind of hidden here uh, they don't show as well so it depends on what you're trying to show if you're trying to show the lows to somebody this would be great but it depends so in this case I don't like that let's try also there's heat there's several other ones you can bring in so let's see what a heat variation of this is let's just hit control and enter and there we go so that's with heat obviously reds and oranges would be at the high end um, you can see them and the whites and yellows would be at the low end this makes it so it's the opposite of what you saw before with diverging this minimizes the lows see how the lows are white and you don't really pay much attention to them, you just like glance over them. And then it uh, prioritizes the middle area a little bit more. The highs kind of stand out a little bit, but not quite as much as I would like. That's why I like to use this, the spectral up above. But you can use this, and this minimizes the impact of the lows. You, maybe you're not trying to identify the lows, maybe you're just trying to identify you know, who is low, medium, or low average and medium and maybe the highs too a little bit but it doesn't quite make the highs pop as much as I would like but that's okay you can use this for that um, if I want to go back to it remember all we had in here was this part right here so let's just get rid of this and bring in the color palette we had spectral let's bring that back in and there we go so in this case it does kind of highlight the lows a little bit um, it makes the highs a little bit harder to see, but it depends on what you're trying to show, show here. I'm just trying to show you something colorful. If you want to really show the highs the best, in my opinion, the purples probably does that. So let's do this. If I run the exact same code again, here we go, and there's the purple. So it really, the purples does the best job of minimizing the real low areas. Um, and then emphasizing the highs, I think, in my opinion. But that's just part. This is all in you know how you see it and how you see fit and the data that you're using. With this data, I think that one works best if you want to show the highs and you want to show you know the the middle to high areas. But you could use any of these. It doesn't matter. Whatever works best for you. The cool thing here is it's very simple. It's only a few lines of code. You've got three libraries you're bringing in. Um, 
very easy functionality. And what's nice about this, this works for all our studio versions going on through 3.5 and above. So anyone that's been having issues with the previous one, it's because, or the previous video that I made, it's because you're on a newer version that only works up to a certain version in 3.4 and then there's a cutoff. I don't remember exactly the number of the version, but there's a point in 3.4 where it no longer works and you have to use this to do the same functionality. So just use this and uh, you know, you'll be able to make some cool world maps. You know, this is New Year's uh, Day, so or not New Year's, <laughs> I'm getting off here by week. Uh, this is Christmas Eve, so everyone have a happy holidays and uh, Merry Christmas, and um, keep tuned for new great videos like this. Please be sure and subscribe and like and comment. I would like to hear from you, see what you like, what you want to see next, what you don't want to see, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And again, I'm going to post this out on Kaggle. I'll give you guys a link to it. And uh, on top of that, um, I'm also going to make an R. I've got, I've already made. It. I've got an R Markdown version of this, so you can start using R Markdown, which is another cool package in R that's great for documenting. So when you create great processes, one of the hallmarks of data science and data analysis is making great documentation. Because the reason is, is you're going to constantly be making new stuff and new processes. And the problem is, six months down the road, you're not going to remember what you did or what somebody else did. So you want to make sure you have great documentation because if you document it well, you'll know exactly what you did. It'll take you seconds to get back into it and run it again for somebody or import new data or make some little tweaks because they gave you data that was a little bit different or you have to put data together. That's fine, but it makes it so much quicker if you document. If you don't document, oh, it's horrible. So you'll, you'll thank yourself if you document everything. So stay tuned. I'm going to have this in R Markdown here shortly. For you. I'll create a video on that that I'll take you all through that the steps of that. So please take a moment to uh, subscribe, like, and comment, and have a great holidays. Thank you.